Ready, wanna know why? And you wanna know why? And you wanna know why? Do you ever get snakes around here, Joe? Oh, yes. We keep out of each other's way. It's a beautiful spot. Perfect. And this is the problem, eh? Yes. Small cracks in a mud brick are all right. But with big cracks like that, it loses all its strength. I can't build a house out of those. What mixture did you use? Soil and water and some straw, because it's supposed to help hold it together. Yeah, that's right. The problem wouldn't be in the straw. How much water did you use? Just enough so it's not too sloppy, not too stiff. Fair enough. Well, it looks like the problem's either with the soil you're using or... Or the way you're drying the bricks. Is that where you got the soil from? Yes. OK, if we take a sample and run some tests on it? Be my guess. I need some bags. How much do you reckon that shovel weighs? Oh, about two or three kilos. Well, what's that got to do with it? Nothing. As long as you've got the shovel, you may as well start digging. What are they saying, Vortex? The telescope plankton enables me to see better, but it does nothing for my hearing. What are they doing? Well, if you stop crawling all over me, I'll tell you. I'm sorry. Now. Uh, it would appear to me that somebody is trying to construct a mud brick house, but is having some trouble in building the bricks. Hmm. So Infinity Limited has been called in for advice. Kindly allow me to do the explaining. So Infinity Limited have been called in for advice. I see. Well, what are we going to do? Ah, we, my boy, are going to go one better. We ourselves shall construct the bricks for the lady and save her all the trouble. <laughs> hey. oh. 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 If I had any strength left, I'd get us a drink. Oh, I've been digging all afternoon. What do you think about this brick business, then? Well, do you agree that the cracking's caused by either something wrong in the soil or the drying process? I can't think of anything else. So, first things first, the soil. Yeah, could be that there's too much clay in it. In which case, we do a soil test. Ah, oh, thanks. <sighs> right, let's get on with it. As I remember, the best clay content is, is between 50 and 80 percent. And if it's more than 80? Well, Joan can put a little bit more straw in a mixture, or she can use a little bit of sand. Do you think one sample's enough? I think so. We mix the, mix the soil up pretty well before we put it in the bags. Can I quote you on that? Sure. <laughs> I still don't quite see. We're not going to find any mud bricks here. No, no, no. Here we find out how they make ordinary house bricks. Then we'll design our own mud brick building machine, right? See, if we talk to mud brick builders, they'll steal the whole idea. What idea? The mud brick machine. Do we really need a machine? Oh, there's a lot of people building mud brick houses nowadays, Plankton. Once we've sold our first batch, we can go into mass production and make a fortune. Aren't we rushing into things a bit? He who hesitates is lost, my boy, there. Now try this on for size, there you go. I make the bottom of the clay there and the top there. Right. So that's just over six centimetres of clay. And the total height of all the soil? That's ten centimetres. Which means the soil content is about 60% clay. So the clay content is okay. 
That means the problem must be in the drying process. Mm. You know, I've been thinking about that. Remember how Joan said it was a stinking hot day when she made the bricks? Yeah, and dusty because of the wind. And she left the bricks out in the open? Which means the drying would take place very quickly. Mm. Maybe too quickly. So if we could find a way to slow down the drying process, maybe the bricks wouldn't crack. Mm. How could we do that? The uh, French Ministry of Bricks, you say? Oui, monsieur. Si, senor. Uh, we are most interested to see how you make the bricks in Australia. Eh? Well, we're not all the same, you know. At this brickyard, we make pressed bricks. Oh, <laughs> this is good, because that is how we... <coughs> but, but please, uh, continue, monsieur. We uh, used to dig the clay up here, but we've run out now. So we have it delivered by truck instead from another clay pit. There's one now. The clay is ground down to size and well mixed up before it gets to the pressing machine. On one side of the pressing machine, water is added. And the wet clay is pressed into the moulds to make two bricks at a time. Around the other side, the bricks are pushed out of the moulds. A bit of girth, oh, of course. And from there, the uh, bricks are taken by forklift to the kiln. The kiln is a sort of circular tunnel full of bricks. Oh, nearly full. The fresh ones are brought in at one end, and the finished ones are taken away at the other. Yeah, obvious, eh? Yeah. Oh, obvious, <laughs> yeah. And uh, we keep a fire going in between. It's fueled by brown coal released from above and gets up to uh, 1,100 degrees Celsius in the middle. Oh, la, la. Oh, hell, yeah. It takes us about eight days to work around the tunnel. So that's how long each brick is in there. After firing, we store the bricks until someone buys them. And that's about it. I see, I see, I see. Thank you, monsieur. You have been most helpful. My pleasure. Hey, oh, yeah. <laughs> Good, goodbye. Uh, uh, hi. Adios, amigos. Come here, you dog. Oui, oui. We've put three groups of bricks out here to dry. And we've used the same mixture in all of them, the one you used. We'll make it very hot with these lamps and very windy with these fans. So it's just like hot, windy weather outside. Yeah, except it's better to have artificial weather inside like this because then we can keep it the same all the time. Group one is out in the open, like you had yours, Joan. Uh-huh. Now, we've sheltered group two from the direct rays of the sun with this little roof, although it's still being blown about by the wind. And we've sheltered group three from the wind. Oh, but the plastic still lets the sun through. Yeah, well, we just put little holes in the plastic so the water evaporating from the mixture can gently escape. We'll check it every day for cracking. Mm. It'll be a few days before we've got any results for you, though. Oh, right. Well, in the meantime, there's something else you might be able to help me with. Sure, what is it? I've been wondering, can I build all of my house out of mud bricks? Bum, 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 bum. Oh, it's a great day for science. If you say so, Vortex, where do you switch it on? Ah, uh, well, it uh, doesn't switch on as such, Plankton. Um, it's a man-powered machine. <laughs> yeah. I think I might go and do a bit of shopping or something. Oh, Plankton, my dear, good friend. Now, let me show you what you have to do. Now, the dirt and straw go in here, water here. And then we turn this wheel, mix it all up, and then we push this lever here, which presses it into shape. And then we push this lever here, which frees it from the mould and ejects the mud brick. Simple. How are we going to get the soil? Oh, I had the first truckload delivered this morning. Where is it? Well, you pull that chain there, which puts it into the machine. A plank down, Yes, Vortex? Nothing, Plankton. Nothing. Mm -hmm. 
Now. Pull it. Now. Now. Thank you. Another straw? Water? Okay, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough, right? Well, don't just stand there, man. Get on with it. And now, Plankton, eject the first mud brick. Dun, da, da, dun, 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 da. Huh? I was expecting something a little large. No, all right, don't panic, don't panic. Just a minor adjustment. That's all that's needed. Could you build a house entirely out of mud bricks? Well, if you're going to have a fireplace in the house... You'll need fire-resistant bricks on the inside here. Or you could have a sheet of steel across the back of the firebox. Unprotected mud bricks will crumble away after a time. Anything else? Well, you've got a problem with the chimney, too. You need a metal cap here to stop the top being eroded away by rain. And it's best if you cover the outside of the chimney with a layer of concrete to the roof line for the same reason. That's your roof. That's your roof line. Now, won't you have that problem with the walls as well? And uh, not if you have a roof with wide eaves, like that. Uh, mud bricks can take a certain amount of rain, but constant attack by water will erode them badly. I should always do a water test on your mud bricks first to make sure they'll stand up to normal rain. Hang on a second, you're just getting ahead of me there. Mud, mud, glorious mud. Uh, nothing quite like it for cooling of the blood. So follow me, follow, down to the hollow, and there we will wallow in glorious mud. <laughs> oh, that's not bad, not bad at all. Hey, these bricks are looking terrific. Mind you, you're a bit slow, though. You're down to 17.3 an hour. Well, let's see if you can't get up to 20, hey? There's a good boy. Now have a banana. Thanks, I might have it with my lunch. Hey, that is lunch, I'm afraid. Now, come on, make it snappy. 20 bricks an hour. Where are we going to put them to dry? On the roof, of course. Where you could really have an erosion problem with mud bricks is at the bottom of your walls. It's best to have a concrete foundation with a layer of plastic sheeting underneath it to keep the moisture out. On top of that, you should have a row or two of ordinary house bricks, that is, uh, clay-fired bricks. Oh, I see. So you can have as much water as you like, lap and splash against those, and they won't be affected. Right. Mm. Then before you put your mud bricks on top of that, you need a damp course, which is a special sort of plastic laid on top of your house bricks. There. That stops moisture rising up from the ground into your walls. Mm. Uh, you're not working for the French Ministry of Bricks by any chance, are you? What? No. Oh, just wondering. Oh, the injustice of it. The iniquity. The shame. Oh, haul in your sails, Plankton. I've got some bad news for you. Plankton. Plankton. Here. Will you have a look at this? Most people building mud brick houses live in the outer suburbs, right? Right. So if we take into consideration the cost of carting the dirt here and then transporting the bricks to the building site, it's going to cost a small fortune. Nobody's going to buy them. Oh, yet another cruel blow that fate has struck. Ah, oh, phooey! Merciful heavens. We're not beaten yet. Plankton! Plankton! Yeah. Look here. 
wattle and daub. That's what this cottage is made out of. Sticks and mud. Wattle and daub. Oh, don't you see? We can catapult wattle and daub into the 20th century by prefabricating it here and then transporting it to the building site like um, plasterboard. Plasterboard? Yeah, sheets of plaster that are ready made at a factory, except we'll do the same with sheets of mud. I'll, I'll call it, um, vortboard. You see, it'll be lighter than mud bricks and therefore more economical. There's no doubt about it, Plankton. I am a genius. Well, I certainly want to have a fireplace, so I'll follow your advice on building the chimney and foundations. How did this all turn out? Well, it's all pretty clear, really. The bricks in Group 1 were out in the open. They developed bad cracks after the first day. Now, Group 2 was sheltered from the sun. One of those bricks is OK, but the other two developed bad cracks after... After seven days for this one and nine days for that one. Hmm. Now, it's nearly two weeks since we started the experiment. All the bricks in Group 3 are OK. So this is the best way for me to dry my bricks? On hot, windy days, yes. The water in the bricks evaporates, but most of it's trapped by the plastic. So the drying process takes place much more slowly. And the bricks don't crack. That's great. Dear loyal plankton, you must be so tired. Yes, Forty. Yeah, well, don't stop work now, man. As soon as this lot's dry, we can deliver the first batch to the mud brick lady. You know, our little invention is going to revolutionise the building industry, Plankton. Vort board. <laughs> How does that sound? Very silly. Pardon? Very clever, Vort. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now, full speed ahead, my boy. As soon as it's dry, we can deliver the first batch. Well, Joan, don't keep us in suspense any longer. Let's have a look. Ta-da! Ah, they look terrific. Couldn't be better. A few small cracks, but that's normal. Well, pleased? Ah, oh, yes. I've always dreamed of building my own house, and now I know I can do it. Well... Now, don't tell me something else is wrong. We have to test their water resistance, just to be sure. We'll aim that hose full blast at the brick for about 10 minutes. Then we'll check on the degree of erosion. Better check on me, too. I might have passed out by then. All set. It's only slightly worn. So? So it means that the rain's not going to be a problem. As long as you use the right roof and so on. So you can start building. Fabulous. Wouldn't you know it? Infinity Limited, first here again. Ah, well, all is not lost. You just grab a vort board or two plankton while I uh, introduce myself. Vortex. Just get the boards, plankton. But Vortex. The... Will you hurry up? Hello! <laughs> Be with you in a tick. <laughs> well, you wanna know why? You get a move on there, Plank, then we go. And you wanna know how? And you wanna know why? And you wanna know now? You wanna know why? And you wanna know how? And you wanna know why? 